Hello, everyone, and happy first day of summer. Thank you for taking time out to join us today for Get Control of Product Changes. I'm Denise, and back with me again this month is Don Lindsay, 32Soft's QAD and MRP guru. Here are some highlights among the vast experience Don brings to his every presentation. Good morning or afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, as uh, Denise said, congratulations. This is the first day of summer. So glad you could join us today for a quick discussion on product change control. One of the basic processes for QAD or any ERP system is setting up product structures and manufacturing data. However, the implementation of an ERP system is just the initial step. It is crucial to maintain accurate and timely records of product changes to ensure that uh, there's an in un uninterrupted production and compliance with audit requirements. Product change control module is uh, a module within QED that empowers companies to effectively handle modifications to their production procedures, equipment, material as time progresses. Production control, uh, change control is designed to provide an efficient and structured approach to controlling and managing product changes while minimizing the impact of those changes on production schedules and resource utilization. Product change control is one of the most important aspects of QAD. So today, what we'd like to talk about is uh, setting up product change control. We'll talk about such things as routing and reason codes and groups. And then we can talk about product change control process, which includes the product change request, product change order, product change control planning, incorporation, and implementation. Then at the end of this session, I'd like to show you just a short view of a 32-stop product change loader, which can make it all much easier to use and control. As always, there's lots of terms and definitions that are associated with a new subject, like product change control. Remember, if you don't know the meaning of a phrase I used, please look it up on Google or no, now, chat GPT, or go to the knowledge base on the QED website or send us an email. As with past webinars, we have created a URL page on 32Soft website that can help navigate this complex subject of product change control. The concept of a formal product change process has been around manufacturing for many decades, with roots in quality control and the continuous improvement practices that emerged in the 20th century. In the early days of mass production, change to production processes and equipment was pretty much an ad hoc or an as-needed basis. In the 1950s and 60s, we saw the advent of total quality control and Kaisan, and now in the 1970s to the 2000s and beyond, we have the advent of computerized manufacturing systems and ERP technology has brought many new capabilities for managing product change. Yesterday's engineering project, the product change without PCC included tracking down hard copies of red lines. There was no connection between ERP and the drawings other than that little field on the item master called revision. There was a long winding approval process so everybody that was on vacation, there was no delegation of authority. It was impossible to track the PCO paper path. Change control lacked automated tools such as email. There wasn't one centralized place for documentation other than file cabinets or Bill Gates. As a planner, I can confirm this was a torture making it work. As I've often said, the investigation of a manufacturing function should be undertaken without considering the individuals who spearheaded those processes. There are several individuals who were instrumental in developing the processes and procedures used in manufacturing operations. Men like Eli Whitney, who gave us interchangeable parts, Frederick Winslow Taylor, called the father of scientific management, Henry Ford with the assembly line. Tachi Ono, who developed the Toyota production system. Joseph Juran, who gave us total quality in it. All of these you should know in many others. We're going to spend most of the afternoon on QED's product change control functionality. But from the start, 
if you decide not to use the product change control uh, module, there are many options out there for you. Product line managers, CAD applications, uh, quality systems. Most of these have APAs that can drive data into and out of your master data in QAD to help implement the change. Just remember, your ERP system contains your operational activity and financial activity and your transactions of record. It is the master system of record. Somehow, all of this must lead back to QAD. So what is production change control? It is a framework of change management over engineering data, such as product structures, routers, process specifications. All of these have influence on your finance and operational ability to execute manufacturing. As stated, this is probably one of the most crucial and difficult arenas of business operations. There are so many areas to consider. So let's consider who are the users of product change control. You could actually list just about every department in your organization. Production, engineering, quality, finance, all departments are impacted by product change control and need to be involved. There are several considerations that need to be think thought about with regards to product change control for both internal and external companies. You need good policies and disciplined procedures. There's reporting requirements that need to be defined and automated. Customers and suppliers have needs and expectations as regard your product. And all manufacturing is complex and detailed. Product configuration must be maintained and controlled for all of the elements of product data management, approval methods, inventory management, change notices, contact inclusion. QED product change control functionality is a tool that can be used to define changes in items, bombs, routers, et cetera, in a sandbox environment to be shared among users. It provides online approval of changes through controlled approval routings. Reports can be generated for all change order content. Approval status and implementation process can be analyzed from history, and it is automatically implemented into the production databases. The basic flow of product change starts with someone having an idea or a reason to change one of your products or documents or processes. That individual needs to create a PCR or PCO. They'll have to be trained how to do that. <coughs> then there's the planning of the update of production data. Once approval and incorporation are completed, the PCO can then be implemented into the live production. After the basic setup is accomplished, which we'll cover, the first step of the process is to create the data required for the product change order. This information includes text, master comments, item master information, bill material, formulas if you're using them, process specifications, item specifications, all through the creation of the product change order itself in 1.9.2.13. And this can all be assisted by hyperlinks to individual item specifications and drawings. Step two in the PCC process is planning for the implementation. Of all the change elements, this is probably the most crucial Part of the change process. The more information you have regarding accurate orders, status, location, the more likely you will succeed at the control process. Reports such as PCR and PCO browse, printing and PCO information, affected palm structures uh, will assist with this planning process. Part 21 CFR 11 requires that all activity in a SOX environment be approved and that approval be documented. You will need to set up how you want that approval process to flow by defining who, users, email, what sequence, and what types of documents are required for your organization. Once the PCO is approved, it must be assimilated into the live production database. This includes releasing and distributing the approved PCO data from engineering and manufacturing. Incorporation, which moves data from the sandbox into production using effectivity dates. At that point, the PCO is processed by implementation to production. There are basically two types of documents in PCC. However, you can create others. The primary document is the product change order. There's also a product change request. 
We will cover the contents of the product change order as the key processes are pretty much identical for the product change request. The PCR PCO type is used to distinguish different kinds of product changes. The type determines the routing slip, the distribution, the prefix, and whether the change is a PCR or a PCO. The type must be defined by a valid type and design group combination. This combination links the information from PCR to PCO. The type should be set up for kinds of product changes based on the criteria for your company, the purpose of the change, product lines affected, product areas affected, et cetera. Before enabling PC and C, there are a few things to keep in mind. Namely, the use of PCC will enable, will permanently disable the engineering change control module if you use it. So training and administration tasks will be involved. Since there is no conversion code, old ECOs will need to be re-entered into QAD. ECOs are not automatically converted during the transition. It's advisable to print hard copies of all existing ECOs. And before enabling PCCs, it's recommended you save all your spreadsheets related to product change control as backup. The activity of transitioning from spreadsheets to PCC can be challenging and time consuming. There are several menus or functions that must be enabled to allow product change control to operate. 13.13.22 enables product structure, 14.22 routings, 1.9.22 or 19.1.22 uh, item specifications and 15.22 for formulas. Like all aspects of product change control, this module begins with its control file. Settings for this function apply to both PCOs and PCRs. Firstly, you have the opportunity to use auto numbering. This is sometimes recommended, but if you want to keep track of PCR PCOs by your own numbering schema, uncheck auto numbering. Security setting of yes requires all users to be prompted to enter their password for PCO approval. This can be intrusive. And enforcing PCO approval group sequence determines whether the system allows completion of a PCO PCR outside the divine, defined process, even if it is not approved by a member of a divine group. Caution, if you say yes to this, this could prevent you from completing a current approval. You need to be right on top of things for this to be yes. Obviously, as most things in ERP, it all starts with the individual. Not only does the individual need to understand the process, he or she must be able to anticipate changes to plan to execute so the product is ultimately shipped to the customer as expected. This takes experienced and talented people. We won't go over all the user maintenance fields with regard to product change, but you will need to define who can create product change orders, which users are going to authorize the changes, and who is going to receive notifications. As with all things in ERP, communication between users is ultimately going to be the tool to execute the plan. Email setup needs to be accomplished not only for the organization, but specifically for the product change control process. As to the definition of users, we have frequently spoken about the need for security, aka SOX and other regulations. From domain to site to attribute, you do not want individuals who do not who you do not trust inputting and manipulating the data that is used to drive your manufacturing system. If your company or organization truly understands itself, there are a whole host of reasons why things happen, both good and bad. From scrap to rework, you should have a formalized schema of reason codes in product change control. This provides an adequate and effective evaluation and analysis of activities. Reason code should be well-defined for both financial and operations. When dealing with product change control, it's best to have standard master comments for use with PCOs and PCRs. Remember, each comment contains 99 pages, 15 lines, and 76 characters. That's 112,800 characters, or 48 pages, of single space comment, lots of room to make your point. We use 1.9.1.1 group maintenance to define groups of individuals who utilize PCC. 
you should specify groups for design, approval, distribution, and all the various functions that use PCOs and PCRs. Users added to PCR and PCO groups must be system users as previously defined in 36.3.1. The 1.9.1.3 maintains users in group. You can make changes to more than one individual in a group at a time, as in hiring or reorganization or elimination of processes. The 1.9.1.5 routing slip maintenance is used to create and define routing slips. Routing slips are used to manage the approval process for the flow of documents in the module. Defining users notified, users email, approval, email approvals, as we saw in the 1.9.24 change control file. So if we look at the two document types together, PCRs and PCOs, as mentioned, a lot of companies simply implement product change order process. That is creating a PCO for approval, releasing, planning, incorporation, and implementing the change order. If we consider the characteristics for the product change order, we see that it is a rigorously controlled process. Actual changes take place in the QAD production related tables, as with incorporation, that directly affect planning data and and production. Final implementation of a product change order affect live production data for items and other tables. The product change order consists of three primary elements, the header, the body, and the trailer. Within the body of the PCO, you can add, change, or delete text, items, structures, routings, formulas, items, fixes, and process, and we'll cover each in detail. The product change order is the primary control mechanism for the change process. The header includes the PCO number and an ID code, which can be used as a subset for a group of PCRs or PCOs. The PCR number may be automated or manual, and the header determines what type of document it is, who originated the change, who created the change, that is input, a title for the change, a reason, and you have two user codes that are defined in generalized codes that are another nice tool for slice and dice. Once you've loaded the basic information in the PCO, from the pop-up menu, we have the PCO function maintenance. With this, you can change the PCO number, you can close a PCO to another PCO, you can copy from a PCO or a PCR to a PCO, lots of functionality. Once you've set up that basic data for the PCO, you can copy text from the master comment into the PCO. This could be used for such things as surveys, checklists, policies, standard procedures, almost anything you can imagine. The PCO body maintenance change menu is the guts of the product change maintenance process. Here you can specify changes for text, items, products, routing, formulas, item specifications, and the trailer. With the text data maintenance, you can modify or delete text item in the PCO, or you can copy text from master comments. With the PCO item data maintenance, you can modify, add, or delete PCO item master data within the PCO. You can also gain direct access to the 1.4 and other item master maintenance. The choice is yours on how you want to do that. The item master direct maintenance opens the 1.4 menus from within the PCO. Some like this, some don't. We will spend a lot of time going through the elements of the item master files. We've gone that, gone that uh, direction before, but if you've got any questions specifically about item master, drop me an email. The PCO direct maintenance lets you get into 1.4.7, 1.4.17, 1.4.5, 1.15, 1.16, 1.16.1, 1.16.2, 1.16.3, 1.16.4, 1.16.5, 1.16.6, 1.16.7, 1.16.8, 1.16.9, 1.16.10, 1.16.11, 1.16.12, 1.16.13, 1.16.14, 1.16.15, 1.16.16, 1.16.17, 1.16.18, 1.16.19, 1.16.20, 1.16.21, 1.16.22, 1.16.23, 1.16.24, 1.16.25, 1.16.26, 1.16.27, 1.16.28, 1.16.29, 1.16.30, 1.16.31, 1.16.32, 1.16.33, 1.16.34, 1.16.35, 1.16.36, 1.16.37, 1.16.38, 1.16.39, 1.16.40, 1.16.41, 1.16.42, 1.16.43, 1.16.44, 1.16.45, 1.16.46, 1.16.47, 1.16.48, 1.16.49, 1.16.50, 1.16.51, 1.16.52, 1.16.53, 1.16.54, 1.16.55, 1.16.56, 1.16.57, 1.16.58, 1.16.59, 1.16.60, 1.16.61, 1.16.62, 1.16.63, 1.16.64, 1.16.65, 1.16.66, 1.16.67, 1.16.68, 1.16.69, 1.16.70, 1.16.71, 1.16.72, 1.16.73, 1.16.74, 1.16.75, 1.16.76, 1.16.77, 1.16.78, 1.16.79, 1.16.80, 1.16.81, 1.16.82, 1.16.83, 1.16.84, 1.16.85, 1.16.86, 1.16.87, 1.16.88, 1.16.89, 1.16.90, 1.16.91, 1.16.92, 1.16.93, 1.16.94, 1.16.95, 1.16.96, 1.16.97, 1.16.98, 1.16.99, 1.16.10, 1.16.11, 1.16.12, 1.16.13, 1.16.14, 1.16.15, 1.16.16, 1.16.17, 1.16.18, 1.16.19, 1.16.20, 1.16.21, 1.16.22, 1.16.23, 1.16.24, 1.16.25, 1.16.26, 1.16.27, 1.16.28, 1.16.29, 1.16.30, 1.16.31, 1.16.32, 1.16.33, 1.16.34, 1.16.35, 1.16.36, 1.16.37, 1.16.38, 1.16.39, 1.16.40, 1.16.41, 1.16.42, 1.16.43, 1.16.44, 1.16.45, 1.16.46, 1.16.47, 1.16.48, 1.16.49, 1.16.50, 1.16.51, 1.16.52, 1.16.53, 1.16.54, 1.16.55, 1.16.56, 1.16.57, 1.16.58, 1.16.59, 1.16.60, 1.16.61, 1.16.62, 1.16.63, 1.16.64, 1.16.65, 1.16.66, 1.16.67, 1.16.68, 1.16.69, 1.16.70, 1.16.71, 1.16.72, 1.16.73, 1.16.74, 1.16.75, 1.16.76, 1.16.77, 1.16.78, 1.16.79, 1.16.80, 1.16.81, 1.16.82, 1.16.83, 1.16.84, 1.16.85, 1.16.86, 1.16.87, 1.16.88, 1.16.89, 1.16.90, 1.16.91, 1.16.92, 1.16.93, 1.16.94, 1.16.95, 1.16.96, 1.16.97, 1.16.98, 1.16.99, 1.16.10, 1.16.11, 1.16.12, 1.16.13, 1.16.14, 1.16.15, 1.16.16, 1.16.17, 1.16.18, 1.16.19, 1.16.20, 1.16.21, 1.16.22, 1.16.23, 1.16.24, 1.16.25, 1.16.26, 1.16.27, 1.16.28, 1.16.29, 1.16.30, 1.16.31, 1.16.32, 1.16.33, 1.16.34, 1.16.35, 1.16.36, 1.16.37, 1.16.38, 1.16.39, 1.16.40, 1.16.41, 1.16.42, 1.16.43, 1.16.44, 1.16.45, 1.16.46, 1.16.47, 1.16.48, 1.16.49, 1.16.50, 1.16.51, 1.16.52, 1.16.53, 1.16.54, 1.16.55, 1.16.56, 1.16.57, 1.16.58, 1.16.59, 1.16.60, 1.16.61, 1.16.62, 1.16.63, 1.16.64, 1.16.65, 1.16.66, 1.16.67, 1.16.68, 1.16.69, 1.16.70, 1.16.71, 1.16.72, 1.16.73, 1.16.74, 1.16.75, 1.16.76, 1.16.77, 1.16.78, 1.16.79, 1.16.80, 1.16.81, 1.16.82, 1.16.83, 1.16.84, 1.16.85, 1.16.86, 1.16.87, 1.16.88, 1.16.89, 1.16.90, 1.16.91, 1.16.92, 1.16.93, 1.16.94, 1.16.95, 1.16.96, 1.16.97, 1.16.98, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 1.16.99, 
detailed maintenance and you'll probably spend most of your time there. You can replace components, copy product structure within PCOs, or deactivate product structures. Next to the item master file, the most important table in your QAD ERP system is your product structure file, which defines how your product is going to be put together, packaged, and ultimately shipped to your customer. If the accuracy of this product definition is not upwards of 100% accurate, your ERP system and the subsequent product change control process will not be effective. For those of you who use the flexible functionality in QED for formulas, those changes are available to the product change menu. They pretty well mirror the product change functionality. As for formula functionality, data maintenance, that's a whole other subject for another day. Routing, the body maintenance, you can access routing data. You can copy routing data, perform detailed maintenance. You can access routing or rate-based routing data. If you do that, you can also utilize this function for deactivating routings if required. Routings have a couple of meanings in product change control. Firstly, there are the routing slips, which we talked about, which determine how the order is going to be distributed to your department and individuals. Then there is the ability to get into 1.4.13 routing maintenance, which defines how your product flows through work centers according to the operations. Again, this isn't a discussion of routing functionality, but if you've got a question, drop me an email. If your organization utilizes test specification and process specifications, the product change control module addresses these document and product changes. The 1.9.13 for product data maintenance follows the same basic uh, functionality for routings that are available for process items. If you're utilizing 19.1 test specifications in QED, from within the 1.9.13 PCO maintenance, you can copy item specifications from the 19 quality management module or the item specification detail maintenance. The last portion of the PCO you must be concerned with is the trailer of the record. Here are the tracking dates for the system, such as the data was submitted, the data was approved, released, distributed, effective, implemented, and closed. Remember, a closed PCO cannot be modified or processed, and you can only close before release and distribution. The same process found in the product change control module request is accessible through the 1.19.25 product change utilities menu. This may be a little easier to adapt to. Again, personal preference. They, they all do the same thing and get you to the same place. A quick word about product change request characteristics. It's not so strictly controlled, a little bit loosey-goosey. You don't have to do it, but if you do, you must have two similar yet different change processes. Production is not affected by a PCR. It must be turned into a PCO. PCRs don't affect financials. And this can allow processing requests from many different sources, like customers, engineers, field reps, et cetera. The PCR body changes exist, same as they do for 1.9.13 PCO maintenance. If you close a PCR to a PCO, or the PCO change order must be open prior to the, change, the close of the PCR to the PCO. After approving the proposed changes in a PCR, you can convert it from a PCR to a PCO to follow the PCO processing steps. Product change process, as we have said, is probably the most complicated aspect of product change control. It covers the origin of the change, the evaluation, the approval, the release, the distribution, the incorporation, and the implementation. This is where the rubber meets the road and all things happen concurrently. Visibility into areas of product change control will play a large part in your planning, from change identification to request initiation, impact assessment to prioritization, to review and approval, implementation planning, verification, validation, documentation and communication, and processing of the change board across engineering data, quality data, customers, 
sales order, planning, supplier, and manufacturing are always striving for continuous improvement in the process. QED provides uh, several tools with regards to product change control. The 1.9.7.3 incorporation planning specifically traps product change control process. I would make a couple of browses and maybe some collections to assist with the immense amount of data required for PCC. As to the incorporation planning report, I would run it first and often. The 1.9.9.3 affected structures helps identify all of the items and structures involved with product change control. The 1.9.9.6 item revision history gets a complete historical view of all items affected by the PCC process. And in 1.9.9.9 item revision non-variant report, you can create reports on item revision number discrepancies between the item master and item site or discrepancies on purchase orders. Data visibility is the key to properly understanding the impact of changes to adequately plan into the future, how best those changes should be implemented into your production process. Since PCC process involves most aspects of QAD's ERP system, there are many, many browsers and collections, but you should pick and choose which ones you want and standard on those. Here is a suggested list of browse collections that might be a benefit in your change control process. You have to know everything that is happening or will happen. Menu collections are also extremely well designed for ERP status and product change control. Use 1.9.9.1 print PCO to generate a complete display of all PCO PCR information for any individual PCC document or range selectable by items, domains, status, or user fields. How you do this will be determined by your organization's change process. But this report gives almost everything you would need to know about an individual PCR or PCO. The 1.9.2.8 PCO detail provides header information, notes, product structure, routings, and approval status. Here is the handy 1.9.11 PCO status browse. Note the blank status denotes it's in pre-submission. Approvals assign acquiescence and consent to proposed changes and allows those changes to enter the QAD enterprise planning and distribution table. This enforces strict control. That is who can approve the changes as approvals are key part of SOX compliant and e-signature setup. You can use PCRs to evaluate changes before converting them to PCOs. Change notification announces to the organization that the changes have been submitted or approved for operational data and processes and that various departments, such as sales, marketing, production, finance, engineering, need to be prepared for those product changes. Broad inclusion refers to the concept of creating environments, policies, and practices that foster diversity, equality, inclusion for all involved individuals. It's a struggle, but it's very necessary. The 1.9.2.4 route PCR for approval is used to place product change requests into the approval cycle. PCRs are usually converted to PCOs following approval, thereafter using the PCO functionality. The 1.9.2.16 route PCO for approval to place product changes onto the approval cycle. Be cautious. This is a major milestone in the PCC process. Use 1.9.6.1 PCO approval to approve or reject either submitted product change requests or product change orders. The 1.9.6.13 detail approval is used to override the standard approval process when approving or rejecting PCRs and PCOs. For example, a department manager might use this program to approve a PCO that needs to go into manufacturing immediately because the standard approver or group of approvals is unavailable. 
You can also use detail approval to modify other approval details, such as sequence codes and reroute levels. Once the PCO has been through the approval cycle, the 1.9.7 PCO implementation menu controls how and when the PCO will be assimilated into the QAD PCO and production tables. It consists of release and distribution, incorporation planning, incorporation selection, incorporation and implementation. The 1.9.7.1 release and distribution releases the approved PCO from engineering to manufacturing and planning and distributes the PCO to responsible group members. The 1.9.7.3 incorporation planning report is a key report for incorporation planning. It covers the original quantities, final quantities, quantity on hand, quantity on order, projected usages, balances, and values. I would use this often. The 1.9.4.7 incorporation selection is used to set the effectivity date for changes defined in the PCO. This is critical as it defines the dates of table update. This takes practice and discipline to get right. The 1.9.7.3 incorporation specifies whether or not to begin incorporation for all PCOs that have an incorporation effective date. Incorporation makes the data available to MRP, DRP, and other modules prior to incorporation. The product change order does not affect the item master product or formula tables. Everything must be ready on the date of the PCO effectivity. PCO uh, incorporation is in essence an update process that should be run as a daily batch in most companies. The 1.7.1.9.713 uh, implementation specifies whether or not to begin the implementation process. The PCO implementation checks for PCO scheduled to become effective on the current date and updates the current rev on all affected items. Critical. The 1.9 product change menu function provides three important activities for the product change control process. 1.9.13, import export. 1.9.14, PCR close. And 1.9.15, delete and archive. The 1.9.13 saves product changes to a text ASCII file for import into other databases or for restoring activities or for geological, uh, geographical separation issues. ASCII formats are easy to import into other programs and archival data remains accessible. The PCRs are closed after they've been copied into a PCO. PCOs are closed if they are going to be exported or the change are not going to be released. The 1.9.15 PCR delete and archive is used to delete and archive PCOs that have been closed using the PCR close function. The system doesn't automatically delete historical information at either the period or year end. In QAD, the deactivate functionality is used to disable or deactivate certain elements within the system. The purpose of this functionality can vary on specific modules or features being deactivated. A few common purposes are to deactivate users, inactivate customers, vendors, mark items or products as inactive, deactivate price list, pricing addition, workflows, or approval processes. Navigation of the entire product change control module in QAD is somewhat complex. 32Soft has developed a loader that makes the process of data manipulation in PCC straightforward and familiar. The PCO loader is a complementary tool to the product change control module in QAD. As we have seen, the product change control module can store and control monitor changes from inception to implementation. Here is the PCO 32 soft loader header tab. We see the PCO number, the ID, the database or domain, the type, the design, and those two handy user defined fields from generalized codes. The BOM tab of the 32 soft product change loader allows for the selection of a BOM code in column A, then retrieves that data into the loader with 
the Get Bomb button. Once the appropriate modifications of the bomb are completed in a loader, the Upload button writes that data to the product change tables. The Routing tab lets change control access and allows selection of routing codes in column A, as we saw with the bomb code, then retrieves that data into uh, from QAD. Once the appropriate modifications are made to routing data, you can upload that data back into the product change tables. The item PCO tab lets you define which items are affected by the PCO listed by items in column and clicking the get item button. Again, once it's been updated, the upload button writes information back to product change control. As we saw from the PCO body maintenance, the trailer menu can here you can modify the PCO number, the ID, the domain, the type, the design group, class, user codes, origin, title, reason. You're also given information about cost, closed status, mandatory, and distribution. So what have we covered today? We've covered a little bit about the uh, history of product change, some tools. We looked at the PCO process, the flow, setup, routing slips, groups, approvals. We looked extensively at the PCO maintenance, then release and distribution incorporation, implementation, and some utilities with a quick look at the product change loader. Product change control is a complex process. We should want to build our PCC Actium over time. I would recommend you visit the following to increase your skills. First of all, there's the forums, the QED forums. Note the uh, forums available for product scheduling, planning, and supply chain. Uh, user groups, the West Coast user group, Midwest user group, Southeast user group have excellent discussion and resource boards. There's the QAD knowledge base, my go-to after F1. AI is going to make this amazing. There is the QA document library, everything you wanted to know about QAD if you look hard enough, and the QAD Learning Center, which is a great place to learn about the QAD functionality. For additional assistance, we put on the 32 website a list of URLs complete with clickable links for all slides, documents, records, and sites that we used for this uh, presentation. Just click the URL and you're brought to a list of the URLs for various subjects that you can use to better understand your use of data in QAD's ERP system. We hope you've enjoyed this quick review of QAD's product change control functionality and how one might use that functionality to help you deal with the multitude of changes we are hit with on a daily basis. That is one of the things I always liked about being in the supply chain, no two days were the same. There were always new challenges and your need to plan for it and execute against that change, never ending. Your ability to control product change flow and provide data is critical for your success in today's electronic environment. Please contact myself, Denise, Alex, Nancy, if you think you have any questions regarding PCC and QED. Thank you so much. And Denise, back to you. Fantastic, as always, Don. Thank you for that. Tons of great information. Yep, as always. We move along, we can take a look at what we have in July. And on the 19th, Don will discuss price lists. He'll share with us best practices and show how we can manage our price lists quickly and easily. We do hope you can make this session because we do take a webinar break in August. Uh, also, I know summer has just arrived, so our peak into the fall will be brief, but the Midwest and West Coast user groups that Don mentioned and Southeast, I'm sure, are prepping for their respective conferences. We, 32Soft, will attend both of these and hope to see many of you there. As each conference gets closer, we'll have more details about 32Soft presentation topics. But meanwhile, as I did mention, I think last month, if you're not a member of any QAD user group yet, they are definitely worth your consideration. Tons and tons of information to soak up from them. Okay, with that said, let's return to today with a final thought about product change control. And as Don also mentioned, product changes impact about every aspect of a business. So poor product change control can most definitely undermine customer trust. 
PCC is critical because trust is the currency of business. We, I think, we're, yeah, I think we're we're going to close out today's webinar a little differently. I have uploaded an eight-minute demo of our PC see data loader that Don showed you some screenshots of. So for anyone who wishes to hang on for a few minutes and view that today, I will plan as we close out today's session. If you don't have time, you can certainly view it on your own, of course. And after the video finishes, the session will then close. Don, do you have anything else to add for today? Uh, no, it's just uh, like I say, the uh, setting ERP is uh, somewhat difficult, but uh, Product change control is is really where the rubber meets the road because the world changes, things happen, orders get canceled, there's changes in forecast, and to keep track of that on spreadsheets outside of QED, even with these uh, product data management tools, you still have to bring all of that data into QED and set QAD so that it is used to manage your production. So product exchange control, huge, huge issue. Yes, I can see that for sure. Thank you, Don, for your time taken to prepare and share with all of us your expertise. Very much Thank appreciated. You. Thank you much. And as always, thank you to all of the, our attendees today for taking the time out to join us live. And hopefully we will see you again next month. And have a great day, everybody. Welcome to the demonstration of 32Sauce Product Change Control Data Loader, also called PCC Data Loader. This data loader was designed especially for QAD users who manage product structures through the Product Change Control module in QAD. The Product Change Control data loader provides real-time access to QAD data and is a quick, convenient way to create new or modify existing product change orders in QAD. This tool simplifies the PCO maintenance interface. Navigation among multiple PCO maintenance screens in QAD is reduced to a single click in Excel, where you can mass update selected parameters for multiple items and create product change orders for single or multiple bombs. Let's take a look at how PCC Data Loader can help you manage product change orders and bombs with greater efficiency and accuracy. When we open the data loader, we see a familiar Excel spreadsheet with the addition of the data loader banner. The banner includes product change order header fields and action buttons, which allow us to download data from and upload data back to QAD. To get started, we need to select our database. We click the Setup button to find the appropriate database and select it. As many databases as are needed can be set up by the administrator in the data loader. We can download an existing product change order and modify it if it has not been released yet, or we can create a new order. To download an existing PCO, we need to enter the PCO number and ID in the banner. If we do not know the exact PCO number, we can use the Lookup button to search for it in QAD. As soon as we select any of the action buttons for the first time, a login screen appears. As with all 32Soft data loaders, the PCC data loader uses QAD authentication logic to validate user ID and password. This data loader validates that the user has access to product change order maintenance in QAD. Let's log in. The result of the lookup function is a drop-down list of matching values. We can select the PCO number from this list. Once the PCO number and ID have been entered, we select the Download button. The product change order specified in the banner is downloaded. For each connection, the name of the QAD database will be displayed in the banner. When modifying an existing PCO, we can make required changes to the header or line details. In line details, we can add new BOM lines to the PCO or deactivate existing ones. 
To deactivate a line in the existing PCO or product structure, we need to change the value in the Deactivate column to Yes. New PCO lines can be added manually or downloaded from QAD. To download item BOM from QAD, we need to specify the parent item number. If we do not remember the exact item number, we can again use the lookup function to search for it in QAD. Then select the required value from the list and click on Get BOM. We can download multiple product structures by entering another item code in the parent item column under the last downloaded line and, again, click on the Get BOM button. When product changes affect certain components, we can download all BOM lines for this component from QAD. To do so, we need to enter component code in the component column and click on Get Where Used. All the BOM lines where this component is used will be downloaded. We can download multiple BOM lines for multiple components by entering another component code under the last downloaded line and clicking on Get Where Used again. Once we have made all required changes to the product change order in the data loader, we can click on the Upload button to send our new data to QAD. A pop-up window displays the status of our upload, and we see our upload was successful. If we need to create a new product change order, then we also need to enter order details in the banner. Some of these fields are mandatory and we need to populate them to be able to create an order in QAD. Mandatory fields include type, design group, title, and reason. The rest of the fields are optional. We can enter PCO number and ID or leave them blank. QAD will generate them automatically. After we enter our banner information and line details, we can click the Upload button to create a new PCO in QAD. Again, a pop-up screen displays the status of the upload and will indicate if our upload is successful or if our data contains any errors. Just like all 32Soft data loaders, the PCC loader validates data in the cells against genuine QAD logic and will return an error message if inaccurate data is submitted, as in this case. Cells that contain errors are highlighted in red. When we place the cursor in the cell, the reason for the error is displayed. We must correct all errors before resubmitting our data. Once we fix the errors, we can repeat the upload attempt. If all data is correct, a new product change order will be created in QAD. As we see, this time our data loaded successfully. We can review a modified or newly created PCO in QAD by selecting or entering the PCO number and clicking on View PCO. As demonstrated, this easy-to-use tool makes it simple to manage product change orders from convenient Excel spreadsheets and then upload data safely to QAD. 32Soft's PCC Data Loader will increase your productivity, reduce errors, and significantly contribute to your bottom line. For more information about this and other productivity tools, or to start your free 60-day trial, email us at contact at 32soft.com and please be sure to visit our website to sign up for our free educational webinars www.32soft.com Thank you for your interest in our productivity tools and for watching this demonstration.